Hi, my name is Mary Bukisevich and this lectorial is about the management of central field loss. In particular, I'm going to be talking to you about eccentric viewing training and how to conduct a training program. And this will be done over two parts. So here is part one. Right, now as you can see from this graph taken from uh, the Clear Insight publication by iResearch Australia, the most common cause of blindness in people aged over 40 in the country is macular degeneration. And you can see it makes up almost half of the people that have blindness. Now the resultant vision loss from macular degeneration is restricted usually to the central 10 degrees from fixation. And this will severely impact a person's ability to perform activities of daily living because as we already know, the macula is responsible for fine detailed vision, color vision, uh, visioning in bright lighting conditions and so on. There have been uh, many studies which have shown the value of eccentric viewing training for people with uh, macular degeneration, but a few conditions need to be met before you can start a training program. So the indications for eccentric viewing training are that the patient needs to have an absolute bilateral central scotoma. They also need to be able to comprehend and remember simple instructions. So it's very difficult to conduct eccentric viewing training on somebody that uh, has dementia, for example, because they're not going to, their short term memory will be affected possibly, and they're not going to remember from session to session what you've been, what you've been explaining to them. Modified programs could also be appropriate for some patients. So for example, if they have depressed foveal function and not necessarily an absolute central scotoma and more work uh, and scientific research is, is being conducted in this area to, to, to evaluate uh, the value of training people with depressed foveal function. Also for patients with uh, a central ring scotoma or what we call a donut scotoma where they have some intact vision within the central 10 degrees of fixation but everything else around it is um, not functioning and so you could potentially teach them to use a, a viable retinal area beyond um, the macula or just outside of that foveal zone. And then uh, also you can provide unilateral training to patients in the presence of other pathology. For example, if a patient had advanced macular degeneration in one eye um, and um, tunnel vision as a result of advanced glaucoma in the other, you may want to teach them to use eccentric viewing uh, in, in, the, in the eye with the macular degeneration um, for the purposes of moving about safely, for example. So there are a few different options, but generally speaking, um, it's mostly for people with an absolute bilateral central scotoma and um, making sure that they can remember simple instructions. So that's what I'll be concentrating on in this lectorial. So how does it actually work? Well, have a look at um, this image. So a person with a central scotoma will learn to use their peripheral vision as shown in this image. So on the top there, um, the scotoma is actually covering the letter A uh, when the person in the picture is fixating directly on it. In the bottom picture B, when he shifts his fixation superiorly, the letter A is projected onto the intact part of the retina thus enabling him to actually see it. And this is a refixation movement um, and it's an eye movement, not a head movement. That's something that you um, really need to understand very clearly. He's not moving his head to make the change, he's moving his eyes and changing his gaze. There's some terminology that you need to be aware of before we move forward. And that is the difference between a preferred retinal locus or a PRL and trained retinal locus or TRL. 
A preferred retinal locus is an eccentric retinal area that behaves as a pseudophobia and is used by the patient in order to see chosen objects. So this is something that um, when there's been this bilateral central vision loss, the patient has made the adaptation and is, is automatically using this other area outside of the fovea in order to see things. Alternately, a trained retinal locus is an eccentric retinal area that the clinician or the orthoptist has determined to be the best position in which to train eccentric viewing. And usually, the orthoptist will choose a position closest to the fovea. Now, um, sometimes the patient's trained retinal locus, the, um, the, the locus that's chosen by the orthoptist, may also be the preferred retinal locus, the one that's um, intuitively chosen by the patient. Now, the development of a retinal locus, whether it's preferred or trained, is a fundamental component of uh, eccentric viewing um, training. Now, whether a patient actually automatically develops uh, their own retinal locus is something that's still being debated. Some authors state that a patient who has a central scotoma might actually use several preferred retinal loci and the development of the preferred retinal locus naturally occurs. But I think the majority of the um, research out there is indicating that patients don't usually use the preferred retinal locus area optimally. And so there is advantage to training a retinal locus. So make sure you understand the difference between those two terms, PRL and TRL. So how do you determine which PRL or TRL location? Well, we already know from our prior learning that visual sensitivity is greatest at the center of the visual field, at the fovea macula area. And it incrementally decreases as we move out towards the per per periphery. The resultant profile um, resembles a hill and we refer to this as the hill of vision, which is a common term used. So based on this physiology, the optimum retinal locus for training eccentric viewing would be as close as possible uh, to the fovea, where visual resolution is the greatest. And therefore, you would avoid any areas that could potentially be affected by the scotoma. I'll explain in more detail how this works. But sometimes there are exceptions to this rule of proximity to the fovea because the direction um, of the preferred or the trained retinal locus can come into play. It might be easier, for example, to use a superior or an inferior point as opposed to a horizontal. But as I said, I'll talk about that shortly. So try and choose a position as close as possible to the damaged fovea. Don't ignore those horizontal positions, uh, though, because acuity outweighs convenience. And that what that means, if, if it's easier for the patient, or actually if a horizontal position is closer to the fovea, then um, that might actually be better for your patient because the acuity will be better the clo as it's closer, closer proximity to the fovea. Use the eye with the most viable position. Um, these patients are not binocular and often binocularity is not an issue, especially if they have very dense central scotomas. Um, and so there might be one eye that has a potential uh, TRL closer to the fovea than the other, so you should use that one. And remember, to stimulate a given retinal locus, turn the eyes in, the, in that direction. For example, to stimulate the right temporal retina, turn the eyes to the right. So in the case of the image that we have here, um, the uh, trained retinal locus is going to be uh, inferior. So the patient there in um, picture B needs to look upwards in order to stimulate that inferior. Um, retinal area. Prior to training, it's useful to establish some baseline measurements so that your patient can recognise their progress throughout the training process. And some suitable measures could include things like reading material, for example, magazine headlines, which could be useful, 
photographs that they have of their friends and family, performance of particular tasks, for example, um, telling the time on a wristwatch or on a wall clock. And it's a good idea to reassess these activities progressively throughout training. So let's talk about finding the optimal TRL or trained retinal locus. There are several methods whereby you can actually do this and um, I'll talk to you about all of those. So the first option is using a Gerum tangent screen. So it's very useful to have or it's preferable to have a clinically assessed visual field and a one meter Gerum tangent screen um, provides a quick screening and allows you also to observe your patient's fixation pattern. You should use the smallest target visible and um, for patients with uh, macular scotomas, placing the cross like shown in this image is helpful for them to identify where the um, central fixation target is, um, is placed or located. Now, um, I do like to use Gerum tangent screen myself, but um, finding that microperimetry is increasingly being used for this measurement. And as technology evolves, that will be the far superior method of working out um, where the preferred retinal locus is, if the patient has one, or where the best position for the trained retinal locus is. Another method of working out the optimal trained retinal locus is the eccentric viewing home resource kit which was developed by Kerry Fitzmaurice and in this kit this is essentially an, an A4 sheet of paper that's laminated and it's got this cross with the smiley faces on it and what you ask the patient to do is look at the center of that cross and make it disappear because they place their scotoma on it and then whilst they're looking at where they think the center of the cross is you ask them which of those smiley faces is the clearest and the one that is the clearest is the one that's landed in the potential best trained retinal locus position and you will use that so for example if they say that the um, first smiley face on the left is the clearest that means the preferred retinal, uh, sorry the trained retinal locus could be on the left hand side and they would need to make an eye refixation movement to the right in order for eccentric viewing to occur Again, this will become more apparent as uh, we continue on and learn about the principles. Another option is using ECVIEW. ECVIEW is a computer-based method of training in eccentric viewing, um, also developed by Kerry Fitzmaurice. And module one, which is shown on this screen here, is the eccentric stimulation module. The patient looks straight ahead, making that cross there disappear and then um, you place the target, which is the letter S, for example, five degrees from fixation and ask them if they can see anything. And you can move that letter, letter S all the way around that cross, um, up, down, left or right, and in the diagonal positions. And you can also move it from um, being just five degrees away to even 10 degrees away. So essentially it works like a, like a visual field. You, you're trying to find the most intact area of the retina. Uh, here's another method that's been reported in the literature and that is using the clock face method. So you um, either have a, a, a real clock or a picture of a clock and the patient looks at the um, centre of the clock and you know, where they perceive the centre to be and what, whichever number is not covered by the scotoma is essentially the area that could be used as a, a trained retinal locus. Now, there are some pre-training considerations um, that you need to be aware of. So firstly, it's preferable to be realistic in offering training. Um, don't tell your patient who's got profound macular vision loss that they're going to be able to read N5 print after they've finished the eccentric viewing training. That is not realistic and um, most likely because of the physiological arrangement of the retina is actually not possible either. So an, a good indicator of potential success is the viability of the peripheral retina 
um, and you'll know once you've either conducted a few a visual field or had a look at one of those methods of establishing the TRL how close you can get to the to the um, the fovea and that will give you some idea of how good uh, an outcome they're going to get so um, Contrast sensitivity too is another indicator of uh, retinal potential. So contrast sensitivity is one of those tests that's very underutilized. And uh, obviously the worse the contrast sensitivity, the poorer prognosis in terms of training. So do make sure that you check contrast sensitivity as well. Now some considerations during training, um, things that you might not think of, Patients should wear their reading glasses if they're presbyopic and full reading glasses or single vision near glasses are better than bifocal segments because if you rem remember what I said before, you're asking them to make a refixation movement of their eyes, not move their head. So if they're refixating upwards and into the top part of their bifocals, they're actually not looking through the presbyopic correction and that's going to affect their visual acuity. Uh, use baseline assessments such as um, print size as an indicator of progress and simple functional assessments can be a very good progress meter. So things like looking at um, newspaper headlines or looking at a clock face or photos or whatever can, uh, um, can be a good can be used to illustrate to the patient how well they're progressing or even the television. Um, Watching watching TV could, could give them an idea of, of how of the type of improvement they're making with eccentric viewing. Uh, also remember to give your patient constant feedback and remember that the patient has actually learned not to trust their vision. And that's particularly important in um, patients with profound macular degeneration. Because what happens is their central vision is impacted and, and they can still see things in the periphery. So what, what will happen is they might actually be able to pick up a, a coin that's been dropped on the ground somewhere because it's um, bright and shiny and they can see it with their intact peripheral vision. But when they make the movement to actually look at that coin that's dropped on the ground, they can't see it anymore. And so this, this um, does not help them to, to trust what they're actually seeing. Okay, so that's the end of this lectorial. The next part, part two, um, I'm actually going to be giving you a step-by-step -step, uh, indication of how to um, train a patient in eccentric viewing.